So good morning and welcome back to the channel. Danny at Lawrenceville Garage. In case you're wondering what was going on with the Tacoma. I know it's been a little while since we put a video out and you're probably wondering, well, did this did the project stall out? Did you sell it? You know, what what's going on with it? Where are we at? It hasn't stopped. There's been a few things along the way that have slowed things down. Uh, part of the problem in trying to video things is that uh, you may video it the first time and then I turn around and redo it sometimes a second and third time, and sometimes maybe even a fourth. Uh, so trying to video something over and over and over again, I want to make sure that whatever content I put out initially is the correct content and not something that I have to go back later and say, oh, we, we found a problem with that, we didn't do that, and now we're doing this. Because if you're following along or you're trying to do something similar, I don't want you following bad advice. So with that said, uh, Although the project is not finished, it's coming along really well. Um, we've had changes in the weather, that's why I got this on. Currently in the shop, it's about 54 degrees. It's a little chilly. Layers. Anyway, I wanted to take you on a little walk around around the truck. It's not finished yet, but it's not that far off either. Uh, the main projects that we lack are the exhaust and the wiring. Uh, a couple of minor little projects, but really very small. Um, the radiator hoses, for example, were an, an issue in trying to get the, the correct sizes and angles, and the, the fittings were all different. And this. So as we walk through it, I'll explain kind of what we did, where we're at, and that'll let you know kind of why it's taken this long. So maybe when you do your project, these are things that uh, you haven't thought of that you can think of ahead of time that will save you... Uh, from your project that you think will take a month to taking eight months or longer or even getting finished. So anyway, let's take a look at the truck and in no particular order, we'll just start walking around it. And then once we've seen everything we can see from the top, we'll raise it up on the lift, go underneath and I'll show you some stuff there. Okay, let's check it out. Uh, just kind of start over to one side here. Um, there's so many things, uh, so many little small details uh, we mounted the PCM on the passenger side, obviously, and two of the bolts that are already in the truck that hold the uh, ABS system in place pretty well fit the bracket that I had for the side of the PCM, so we just uh, mounted it there. And due to the shape or the contour of this fender panel, I just couldn't come up with a solid bracket that would work as far as uh, touching the surface and, and blending in. So we kind of put it on these little stanchions. Uh, we made those, had them powder coated, uh, had the top of the PCM powder coated as well. And the brackets, these were, uh, I believe these were off of Amazon. And I got ones that were just simple. I didn't want anything that had any fancy laser cutting or pictures or letters or anything in it. Just something that would, that would look uh, kind of a factory look. I had to replace the... Uh, factory windshield wiper reservoir because the other one had been modified for the meth injection for that supercharged four cylinder. Uh, on this side, that's really about all that's been done. Um, looking along the firewall here, you'll notice I still have the complete factory harness intact. I did, have not removed it, have not cut anything. Uh, I don't know yet what I will or won't need, so I'm leaving it alone until I get there. Uh, you can see how the engine is set back, and it is pretty. I got it set back about as far as you can. Um, the valve cover looks really close. Actually, there's about a finger's width in there, but when you put the coil bracket uh, here on top, the size of it and the shape and everything, it makes it look a lot closer than it really is. But it's it's a snug fit. Um, the uh, factory AC fittings. Are a little different than uh, your typical GMs or you know, the threaded sort that are generic. So I wanted to keep those to simplify that part of the swap. And you see, we just uh, took the factory hose, cut it, put in a barb, and had a custom hose made down to the compressor. And this uh, secondary hose, we didn't touch that at all. It goes to the uh, condenser up front. Now on the other side of the condenser, comes out across the top there. We cut it, put a barb, and we've got a hose that runs underneath here. And you'll see it better when we raise the truck up. And it comes up to this other side. 
So our AC hoses are intact. Um, on the front for the core support, uh, we needed a, a coolant overflow bottle, and this is one picked up off of Amazon. It's not expensive, but there was really not going to be a good way to mount it, so we had to get a little um, some sheet metal, and I believe it's seven inches by six and a half, and uh, uh, had it powder coated black. It's drilled, bolts up, very nice. Everything attaches nicely. Um, fills up that spot. Uh, we still have some things going on. Uh, this area here, um, we're going to have probably the electrical box. I haven't decided yet, but since we haven't done the wiring, but the electrical box that's going to house the uh, relays and fuses for the AC and the fans. It's probably going to mount right there because you're, you look down here, you can see the harness for the fans. Uh, and it'll probably be mounted about the same way this one is. Kind of give a consistent look, and uh, that should work out all right. Uh, we're working on hoses. You now, this upper hose, man, we've been through a bunch. I've ordered all kinds of parts to see what would fit, what wouldn't. What this hose is, is a 2006 and 7 Corvette upper hose. No modifications. Um, Put some nice clamps on it, holds it in place well. Uh, I got a second hose for the bottom, but currently you can see that's not complete yet. Uh, it's a longer distance because this particular radiator is actually specific to the Tacoma and not an LS. So uh, that's a long story right there. This water pump is the fourth water pump we went through. Reason being, uh, let's see, the first one, the outlet was on the right-hand side of the pulley. And having to go from the right-hand side of the pulley to this side of the radiator, uh, the fan comes out right here, and there's just, there's just no room. I mean, you can see where it is right here. This, this kind of comes out over the fans. If it had been mounted over here, it would not have worked at all. Uh, we tried another radiator. Or I'm sorry. We tried another water pump. Pulley was very large i think it was an ls2 and it didn't look right then we got another one and it's like for whatever reason the pulley was silver so finally we got it we decided on this one this is an ls7 water pump and it puts the outlet to the uh, passenger side of the pulley which works out really nice keeps the keeps the hose short and it opens up and there's some space here for that hose to work now i've got a second hose just like this upper one and that's what's been cut down below because this factory hose has a couple of very nice 90 degree bends in it and that's what I really needed. Now on this side of the radiator looking down you can see there's some room to work with for that 90 degree but on the water pump side there at the thermostat housing there is not a lot of room. So this thermostat housing is from a company called JTR or Jags That Run and you can get them in any size you want to fit an LS. Something you do have to keep in mind is that whatever water pump you go with, get the corresponding thermostat for it because all else, all LS water pumps are not the same. Uh, there are several different styles and types of thermostats and you have to get the right one because if you don't, you're going to have some problems. This particular housing is a very short housing. It only comes out maybe to here. And you can get it in any size you need. And one of the problems we were having uh, is that, that the, uh, the radiator was specific to a Tacoma. So the inlet and outlet were a particular size. The LS water pump, the factory thermostat housing is a different size than the outlet. So we had all these different sizes. So what we've got going now is I believe they're all, I had the uh, thermostat uh, uh, housing uh, sized at, I believe it's 1 and 5 sixteenths, which is pretty much the same as what these other fittings are. So the hoses all fit correct now. But it just took a while to get all that out and figure it out and, and determine, okay, what's going to work and what's not. I've spent hours uh, researching hoses and looking at pictures of hoses and trying to figure out what would be best. <coughs> okay. The front drive accessory we mentioned is Corvette. 
However, this is a Camaro power string pump. So for a hose, you got to really get, I mean, this is a tight, I don't see how people tighten that nut. It took me a while to do it. But this hose um, is custom made. But the hose down to where my finger is, just the curve above and over to here, is from a factory Camaro hose. Then we had to cut the rest of it off and then bend and cuss and bend and cuss a little more and finally get it contoured in the shape it's in without kinking it so that it fits within the confine. And then we have the custom hose that goes straight down to the steering rack. So that's something to keep in mind uh, as well when you go to change up different things on the on the front drive, you know, what's going to work and what isn't. Um, you're going to have to get creative, but having a, a new hose made was really not a big deal. It wasn't expensive. Um, let's see, where else are we? Uh, custom battery hoses. Uh, this one runs, well, obviously to the passenger side to the starter, but on the way down, it also has an additional wire, if you can see down there, a smaller wire, and that goes to the alternator. So it's much like the uh, original power wire that's on the on a Chevrolet truck. Uh, the difference being instead of having the little box mounted on the side where the, uh, the line came off, this comes all the way to the top. Uh, the, the motor mounts have worked out great. Uh, those are now readily available. So if you want to do a swap, you can call Metal Tech Manufacturing, talk to Jamie, tell him you've got a second gen Tacoma you want to LS swap, and he will fix you up, and you will get some mounts just like we have. Let's see what else. Uh, obviously the battery is not in. Electric fuse box. We put the catch can here. Now originally in this spot we had the tack module because uh, this is a drive-by-wire setup. And this is one of those reasons why we didn't video this, because that area, <coughs> excuse me, we had it completely done. And when I laid the harness out, considering it starts over here, the, the wires that go to the tech module from the PCM were about 18 inches short. And uh, that wasn't gonna work. So what I ended up doing was removing the tech module from there, pulling the wires back through the firewall. The tech module is now mounted inside the truck on top of the transmission tunnel um, in front of the console. And that that wire, the, the bundle of wires that was a little short to go to the tech module, now we're gonna uh, be putting a hole in somewhere down here, maybe even through this, not sure yet. I'd like to, I don't wanna drill any more holes unless I have to, uh, to run the wire in there and it'll easily reach over to the top of the trans tunnel and uh, that way we have the tech module out of the way and it's not under the hood to clutter things up and it's uh, dry and safe inside the cabin. So we put a cash can here and the reason we used a cash can system is because the intake has been shaved. So if you were running a stock truck intake and it hadn't didn't have any mod modifications to it then you wouldn't need a catch can system at all because uh, your PCV valve, it would come over to the top of the intake and everything would be plumbed back into the system uh, for the purpose of reburning it. But since the intake's been shaved and that can't be done, uh, we have to have a way to evacuate some of the uh, crankcase pressure and the uh, oil that's gonna come with that. And so we've got a line that runs from uh, this valve cover and from the back valve cover to the catch can. And the catch can, of course, can be removed and drained and everything. And that uh, may be modified a little in the future. I'm not sure. Uh, right now, we just want to make sure that's going to work. And then uh, if, if something about that needs to be adjusted or tweaked or modified, we'll do that. But I think right now that's going to work. Uh, heater hoses. Uh, these are some Deco hoses I found. They're actually both uh, five eighths. Now I know your fittings are five eighths and three quarters, but with a little bit of massage, that that five eighths will fit over the three quarter inch stub out here on your water pump. And uh, we ran them up here using these uh, uh, line brackets to kind of hold them and separate them and hold them together. 
uh, make them look nice, and they go over to the factory position right there coming out of the firewall. Uh, our steam port is intact. It's right down here. Bottom of the throttle body comes around. You want to know where the steam port goes because it does not go to the radiator. You have to kind of look down in there. We drilled and tapped a hole and put a fitting in the top of the water pump. And uh, that's another good place that you can go to uh, to run that back in. Make sure you put it on the inside and not the outside because uh, depending on the flow uh, going on within the engine, you need it on that side. Could have put it on the top here, but it just looked like it would kind of be in the way. So we put it down low. I'm trying not to forget anything, but I've got some additional ground straps. Um, so we put one right there from the body to the frame. Uh, I've got one, as you can see in the back there, from the body to the back of the engine. Um, got another one right here from the uh, from the body to the back of the power string pump. Um, see, we haven't put the exhaust manifolds in yet. Another one of those areas where we really wanted to run some headers. We tried three different types of headers plus stock truck manifolds. Nothing worked. Uh, and the problem had to do with the steering right in here. Uh, these last two tubes, uh, these last two cylinders, would make contact with that. And at first we were going to try to modify the steering and uh, put an extra universal joint in there, tuck it in closer to the frame. And the more I worked at it, the more I realized it was way more trouble than it was going to be worth. Uh, for a set of headers. Uh, it was going to cost more in parts to modify it than the headers cost. So we decided to leave the steering alone. So the steering shaft is stock. And we're using a pair of what appear to be, uh, let's see, I think they're like a knockoff of a hooker cast iron manifold. And they fit great. No clearance issues whatsoever. Um, let's see, it's part of our custom fuel line. Uh, the intake manifold is, is not a returnless, or it is a returnless system. So it just has the one line. And again, when we go underneath the truck, I'll show you what all we've done there. Covered the uh, AC lines. Uh, let's see. Okay, and the radiator, uh, the shroud we had done in black. Uh, mounted the fans, everything is together there. It's wired and has a harness unto itself attached to the shroud and then we just got the four uh, prong plug at the end that will attach to the uh, relay box and as you can see there's plenty of clearance here if you had to do any work you can that's a little tight on the manifold again if you had a if you had a car manifold uh, that'd really open up some space but there's really, uh, Toyota's really pretty generous here because uh, unlike the OBS trucks, the frame rails on Tacoma are straight. So they're 28 and a half inches wide. And uh, that's why we're able to run that low mount AC with plenty of room and no problems with uh, the exhaust manifolds on the frame. It was just the steering a little bit, but that's something we can overcome pretty easily. Let's uh, take a look underneath the truck. Okay, starting at the back. Um, drive shaft. To uh, measure the correct length that you need once the engine and transmission were in place, you measure from the this faceplate right here at the rear end all the way to the center of the U-joint in this slip joke. So if you had this up, you didn't have a drive shaft, you wanted to know what you needed to do, you put your slip, slip yoke in the trans where you want it, measure from the center of that hole where the universal joint go to that plate, and that tells you the distance that you need to tell the drive shaft company uh, that you need. And in this case, this is the stock drive shaft. And it's uh, been shortened approximately two and a half inches, rebalanced, and the guys did a great job. I'll have a, uh, some links 
in the description below the video. Uh, some of the places we've had do work like uh, Twisted Bee Powder Coating. Did a great job. Uh, this is American Drive Line Supply out of Hearst. Did an excellent job. Very quick as well. Um, looking over here and just checking out the fuel lines. These are the two factory lines coming out of the tank. And in fact, the line, the metal line coming out of them is the factory line. These were cut because the factory lines are metal from here all the way to the front. So we cut the lines and had these uh, fittings welded on. And then we have these high pressure uh, fuel lines now. This is a factory bracket I used uh, from somewhere else. I don't know where I found it on the truck, but I put it right there. It comes up to a uh, Corvette fuel pressure regulator filter. And so you can see there's the, the uh, return line and the feed line. And then from there, we just have the feed line to the motor. Uh, there's one screw here. Had I adjusted these, the length of these hoses just a tweak a hair more, I would have been able to use a factory stud mounting point. I uh, just uh, zip tied the fuel line to this little bracket right here just to support it a bit. And then, as you can see, it goes on up. It looks like it makes contact up there, but it does not. That takes care of the fuel line. Uh, it's very nice. The uh, transmission. Okay, and this, put a little bit more light out of under here. Um, and this, this is the factory uh, Toyota cross member. And all we did was to take, uh, and I can't hold it. This transmission mount is for Chevrolet. So you can see the difference between where the top of the the top of the mount mounts here and where the holes mount the transmission are about two inches apart. So that's how close it came to actually fitting onto the factory cross member. Now the top of the factory cross member has a, is uh, has four holes and that mounts the specific style transmission mount that Toyota uses. I cut that out. Got another little piece of steel, welded it on there, and uh, before I welded it, I attached it to the bottom of this uh, mount. I saw where it would land on this, tacked it in place, pulled it all off, welded it, so now it fits perfect. And there's no need to spend a bunch of money on a transmission mount. Very easy to make. Literally, that's a $15 mount. This is a little piece of... Uh, steel that's probably six inches by four and then there's a smaller piece on top of the uh, cross member here that's probably oh three by three okay uh, up a little higher you can see because the engine and transmission are shifted back a little farther than stock uh, you can see where the floor pan had to be trimmed a little bit you see this is the rubber molding that it fits and I had to trim it back a little farther here just so you can hit second and fourth much easier. And then there's a bracket, and I don't think you can see it very easily. Uh, yeah, you can kind of. A little dark. See if I can get a little light on that. Well, yeah, I'll get my finger out of the way. See what I'm doing. Okay, you can see there's a bracket there that I had to make to mount the shifter uh, handle to because the shifter handle was just a little too far back and it's curved. So that positions the shifter handle about an inch and a half forward. And uh, everything clears fine on top. I'll show you later, but on top, it looks factory stock. So you got plenty of clearance here between the lower cross member and the, uh, the bottom of the engine, bell housing. Um, oil filter access, very easy. Now there are two different size oil filters. The taller filter, won't work it's i mean it is just close enough it just won't work be sure whatever oil pan you use you get the corresponding oil filter because if you change it from a uh, truck to uh i believe this one is like a holly pan or a knockoff of a holly pan you need to make sure your filter will fit so it's already got breaking oil in it 
already snugged up the uh, drain plug on it. Um, let's see what's going on. All right, looking up here at the steering rack. Let's see what's going on up here. Um, we have a power steering cooler, and that's plumbed in. Goes up there. Everything kind of I know on video. It's kind of like okay, I can't tell what I'm looking at. And it's it is a little bit more difficult. This is that AC line, and I've got a bracket. Uh, and there you go, coming off the front of the oil pan, supporting that so it doesn't flop around. And another bracket over here, kind of supporting the uh, battery cable so it doesn't flop around, get into places it shouldn't get into. You see, there's plenty of clearance there with the AC compressor, so if it ever needs to be uh, serviced, not a problem. Lots of clearance down here. The, uh, the steering rack, the return hose is the same. The fitting, the original uh, fitting from Toyota, from the original hose, this is it. Again, it was cut and had a, a piece modified and, and welded on so that the hose would work. So that way the Toyota fitting fits perfect. The other ones, the GM fitting fits perfect. In between is just a rubber hose to make sure it all communicates. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Okay, inside here's a little better shot of the uh, shifter. The original uh, trim and boot are all intact. That's a good looking shift knob and it's got a uh, nice chrome shifting rod um, connected to the transmission, although you really can't see it. We're not quite finished. We've got a couple of gauges that are going to go on the dash uh, steering column here. So aside from going through multiple water pumps, multiple exhaust manifolds, uh, putting the engine and transmission, well, engine, into the chassis uh, probably 15 or 20 times uh, to get the mounts just right, uh, it, it's just, it just takes some time. And I know there are videos that where, a guy, where it shows a guy, hey, he fabbed up some mounts and he had it in there in you know, 30 minutes. Kudos to you, man. Uh, if you can do it, that's great. I can't. Uh, it's, uh, or at least I wasn't able to. I wanted it. I knew a particular way I wanted it to look. Don't cheap out on your motor mounts. There's a number of areas you don't want to cheap out on. And I'll do a video a little later on uh, wiring harness. Um, you got a variety of options there uh, for harnesses. Some are better than others, and it's impossible to say which one is the best for you. Uh, you'll have to make that determination, but I can point out to you the pros and cons of, of uh, various choices. Uh, so anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments uh, down below. Uh, the more feedback we get, the more we kind of know if we're going in the right direction with this. Um, looking, ex looking, really looking forward to getting started on the wiring here shortly. There's just some other things because it's kind of a complex uh, project unto itself. I'm trying to get all these other things tied up first so that I can focus solely on the wiring and nothing else. And then once I get the bulk of the harness in there, uh, we'll find out, you know, based on the way it's made, if everything is going to fit the way it should. Uh, it's one of those pros and cons things. We'll go over that in another video as well. Anyway, I appreciate you sticking around and uh, going through the whole video. I hope you learned something. I hope it gives you some inspiration and motivation. And if you have any questions, again, don't hesitate to ask in, uh, in the comments. below. I'll be glad to respond to them as best I can. I appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe, and we'll check in the next video. Thanks for watching.